Behind me is the abandoned Formula One Valencia street circuit, which is fully accessible to anyone of the public. Like seriously, this is how I was able to get into this section coming into sector three. In my head, this shot looked a lot nicer uh, of, you know, the public being able to come in and out. Yeah, it looks like this, but you get the idea. Also, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, but more on them a little bit later. Now sectors one and two have been already transformed into public walkways, and the only real parts of the track remaining there are old painted sponsorships along with some fencing. But here in sector three, as you can kind of see behind me it's kind of still just all here like yes there's not as much fencing as there was before but you still have concrete walls you've still got all the painted lines now obviously you've got to give it some wear and tear allowance because it hasn't been used since 2012 but you still have astroturf you still have the curbing and a lot of the concrete walls and fencing is still just left here and this obviously doesn't include all the electrics and all the wiring that used to be here obviously all things valuable have already been removed so then what the hell happened here well back in 2007 the city of Valencia secured a deal with Bernie Eccleston to host the Formula One Grand Prix for seven years, starting in 2008 and ending in 2014. And then in 2012, it was the last time this track was gonna see Formula One cars running with Fernando Alonso winning the last ever Spanish Grand Prix at the Valencia Street Circuit. So then what gives? Why weren't we allowed two more races? Was it something decided by Formula One? No, it was actually from the government at the time who basically had to break the contract with Formula One saying they couldn't financially put on two more races. Now, lucky for the government at the time, they didn't actually get any fines from Formula One for breaking the contract early. However, the story doesn't really get much better. If anything, it gets a little bit worse. For example, the actual track construction costs alone are estimated to be around 90 million euros and everything altogether around 300 million euros. And to really put it into perspective of how bad this financial situation is, this time next year, the city of Valencia would have just paid off their debt in paying just the track construction costs. That's how bad this whole situation is. So then how do all these figures link into this abandoned street circuit? Well, that's the unfortunate case of corruption in this lovely city. To really simplify it, the government at the time spent way too much money too quickly. Now, what you're normally meant to do is, let's say you've got your seven races, you want to divvy up your budget, which is either from taxpayers or from companies. So obviously you've got the initial cost to actually build the track, but then you've got all the other costs of maintaining it, you know, marketing, personnel, all this extra stuff. And what happened is that the government at the time basically spent so much money on the first five races that there wasn't enough money to actually run anymore for the last two years. But the way it links into corruption is basically the guys who were in power at the time were giving these construction contracts to friends of theirs and basically filtering and laundering money through the business. Now there was some money left over in the budget but that didn't reach the minimum threshold to actually hold a race. So then that money was then put into false contractor work or bribery or other illegal activity. And the result they wanted is that on paper it looks like there isn't enough budget left to do those last two races and it means like the rich guys and the politicians have kind of got away with it. Which, you know, they didn't because of course you're going to get found out for that and they've all been taken to court and various things have happened to them. But ultimately then we're left with this abandoned street circuit. So then who now then technically owns the street circuit? Well, technically at the moment it's an investment group who are working with the Valencia City Hall to actually redevelop the entire 300,000 square meters of this land. And although no proper contracts and actual work has been signed off yet, we can already start to see some of the work that's been taking place. So for example, I was actually here last year filming. You can still see there are concrete walls and metal fencing all around the place, even with some old metal curbing that was still here. But fast forward a year and that curbing has now been removed along with all the other metal fencing around the circuit and as you can see now all those concrete walls and fences have been moved up and been repurposed because they're trying to use this section of the of the track as more of a car park for the buildings that they've got here I mean you can even see the lorry that they're actually using to try and move those concrete blocks away now as it stands right now this whole area is open to the public now of course you can't come and drive on here they have blocks off the road because also that's down to a safety issue because there's broken glass and metal everywhere and if you were to drive down here your car is not going to leave in the same condition now of course this is something the city is not wanting to advertise but the reason I wanted to make a video about it is because as an F1 fan coming here it's so cool to soak in the history and being able to actually walk around where cars have raced before but if you are planning on going abroad very soon whether it might be coming to here or going to another Formula One race might I recommend you use today's sponsor Surfshark VPN now I've said this before and I'll say it again Tokyo Drift is the best Fast and Furious film in the entire franchise and what you're seeing on screen at the moment is me trying to watch it on Netflix here in Spain and as you can see there is nothing coming up because it's not available in this territory but I want to show you real time how easy it is so I'm just going to swap across to Surfshark's app I'm going to tap on Canada Montreal where it actually is available to watch and after it's then connected me I'm going to go back to the other app I'm going to research it and there you go top result straight away and now 
I'm happy. But Surfshark isn't just limited to folk like me in the UK or to people here in Spain. It has over 3,000 servers across 95 countries, meaning you can unlock even more Geoblock programs and services in different territories. And if you use my promo code MATAMUS at checkout, not only will you get an 83% off your plan, you also get three extra months for free. Plus on top of that, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try all of this out, and if it's not for you, then there's no risk in canceling. So make sure to click the link in the description below. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.